Okay, that being said, there's three, there's three more coming on. Great. We're at 45 people now. And that being said, we'll get started now. Okay, um, so Juve has been around for 12 years. Um, and that's, that's a huge milestone. I think we'll start there. Um, when you think back to 12 years ago, when it got established in 2009, there was no um, Kardashian family. Um, there was no Botox and dermal fillers was not um, publicized. If you had the treatment, it was definitely not on social media. There wasn't any social media to speak of and um, it wasn't even in shopping centers at that point so melissa and i were the first ones to bring it into shopping centers um prior to that there was no injectables in a shopping center so uh 12 years ago we could see that um the cosmetic injectable space was going to be um embraced by the common woman um in the street um, and she too was looking at her aging and wanted to really improve her aging process. And this was going to be done um, through the cosmetic injectable uh, procedures. Um, and we we decided very early on, let's bring that to the common um, Australian woman who's also aging. And it became less taboo to have cosmetic injectables. It was no longer just available for the rich and famous. Um, it was being done by your housewives um, and we went in um, and discovered the possibilities of cosmetic injectables, which is mainly um, and has been in the past, your anti-wrinkle and dermal filler treatment. Now there's a lot more of a range of different cosmetic treatments that will be undergone by a cosmetic nurse um, and we'll go into that as we're going along. Um, Nicole did mention we went into shopping centres and um, such places like uh, we've worked with all the major groups. Um, so we've worked with Urban Spa, Evolution, Ella Rouge, Pure, Pure Indulgence, uh, Brazilian Brazil. Beauty, Hair Free, you name it, we work with them. Silks, we've worked with My Skin, we've worked with all the big chains. Um, and before they discovered the appetite for cosmetic injectables, we were there servicing their clinics. So our vision has changed um, for what was servicing the patient to really Juve's business model has changed over the years. We used to be all about Juve was um, business to end user. Now we're business to business. Um, so we're servicing um, cosmetic nurses. So our vision is to really um, create a environment for doctors and registered nurses to be equipped with the clinical and the business skills to undergo a, um, a, a pardon me, <coughs> to undertake a profession in the cosmetic medicine space. Um, our mission at Juve is to empower nurses. So we're all about empowering our nurses now. Um, with the right clinical skills, the right business support and the right network to be a successful injector. There's a lot of competition now. Um, and the only way to stand out with that competition is to be really skilled. So there's a big lack of knowledge in the industry. To be a great cosmetic injector takes, um, you actually need to be trained in the injecting skill. And one day workshop, really, we don't see it as enough. Um, so our workshop goes over two weeks, one, one week of theory and one week hands-on. Um, the business support, because like we, like Melissa said, all our nurses run their own business now. So we've empowered them to have their own business. Um, and in that gives them a good revenue for themselves. Um, and then obviously the client flows on through there. So um, we do that holistic approach for our nurses. So what we've accomplished over um, the last 12 years is created in, we created a formalised training program for all cosmetic nurses. Um, we are national, we've become a national um, organisation um, and we are probably the front runners in um, the cosmetic medicine um, arena. Um, we've, we are very active, we've made submissions to New South Wales government, Tasmanian government, to APRA, to the Nurse and Midwifery Board about the changes in legislation, how to create better standards of practice 
as a cosmetic nurse, they are they have to adhere to all legislation and APRA guidelines. So that's our governing body that looks after the registration of the pe people that provide the services of cosmetic um, medicine. So they have to adhere to those policies and those guidelines and the legislation set out. Um, and sometimes the, the laws have been a little bit gray. So what Juve has done is seek clarity where there is no clarity. We've gone out to the governing bodies and said, how should this protect the patient, the end user? How do we improve our standards um, for cosmetic medicine to ensure the end user gets a better outcome, that all patients are dealt with in a safe manner. We've all heard the stories where adverse events happen and the nurse isn't equipped to deal with it or the doctor who's meant to be supervising is absent. At Juve, we, don't be we believe in making sure we take the necessary steps prior. We're risk averse, so we want to take the necessary risk um, we want to take the necessary steps to ensure that that never happens to a Juve nurse. Um, we will, Nicole and I are the founders of the Cosmetic Nurses Association in Australia, and this is a non-for-profit organisation which hopes to increase the professional standards of all cosmetic nurses across the country, and we're working with government, um, governing bodies to ensure that they are put in place so that everyone knows where... Everyone knows the clear outline what's expected of a cosmetic nurse. So that's what we've accomplished thus far. Um, our team today compromises uh, is over 120 nurses um, Australian wide. We've got 20 employees, um, including our telehealth medical team. So there are doctors that are on call, um, our clinical trainers, and our head office staff. So we've got a clinical trainer. We've, we've got five clinical trainers to assist us. And um, we've only recently gone into Western Australia and Tasmania, and we really want to make a mark in those um, states um, and really become the top um, cosmetic providing company to nurses. So um, our clinical trainers, they're all APRA registered nurses. Um, we've got certificate falls in training and assessment. Obviously we attend different workshops like cadaver workshops. We do, we're always keeping up with different products like Allergan Medical Institute. Um, obviously they've got an extensive history as a cosmetic injector themselves. They all hold the current CPR certificate and infection control. Yeah. And do you want to tell them what a cadaver course is? Well, that's, um, if you don't know, that's where um, they actually have a real, obviously a dead person, um, and they have their head on a bed, um, and they dissect the face to show you the different depths, the different arteries, the different layers of the skin, um, the different layers of the fat pads right down to the bone. Um, and so it's not for everybody, but so for most nurses, we do enjoy it. So it is more an in-depth anatomy um, training that they um, undergo to ensure that they know exactly um, where the certain landmarks are on the face, where the danger, there. this is a serious medication and the risks and side effects can be severe if you don't know what you're doing. So that, that's why at Juve, we pride ourselves on education being at the forefront so that we're giving, delivering safer treatments to our patients. And, and that only yeah. comes from education and anatomy. And although cosmetic um, medicine is very common these days, some people do forget that there are some really severe side effects like blindness. So I know you all might know of a particular um, beauty therapist who went blind in one eye in Sydney. Um, and that was from a dangerous area being treated by an unskilled injector. So um, really important that, you know, that they know their anatomy really well. Um, so some tailored solutions to take your injectable business further. So Juve nurses provide holistic, bespoke um, support yeah. for cosmetic nurses. So we know all our nurses individually um, and we do it. We have a professional development plan for every single nurse. They're on their own professional development plan. Um, we help them with their marketing to ensure that they are successful um, and that they can, you know, um, be as successful as they can. Yeah. So the clinical support, Juve's clinical support, I don't think there's any support like it in Australia for a cosmetic injector, and that's why we're sought after. Um, we have ongoing business support, like we spoke about. We've got devoted um, personal attention to all our nurses, ensuring they receive all the tools needed for a successful career in this industry. 
Um, we have ongoing clinical training every six weeks. They come to our head office or if they're in Queensland, they'll go to our office in Queensland, our training centre there. Or in Victoria. Or in Victoria or Western and Australia. And that is a one-on-one -on -one training every six weeks to upskill your cosmetic nurse. So what was um, being trained on 12 years ago is now null and void. Things have improved and they get better. We get better at treating areas. We've all, um, I would love to see how many people have heard of the fox eye, how many people have heard of um, the, the Russian leaf. Um, these things are always being improved. Um, and that's where we're able to give those skill sets to the latest techniques to our nurses through this um, clinical training and upskilling that we do with our nurses every six weeks. As Nicole mentioned, we've got a personalised development plan. In addition to that, Juve holds an annual conference every year. We invite the best of the best um, plastic surgeons and cosmetic physicians. They usually are plastic surgeons or dermatologists that get invited. We spare no expense getting the best of the best to come educate our nurses. So they're learning from the best how to treat their patients the best possible outcome. And the way that we're, what we're trying to do here is one, provide a better result for our patient at a lower cost. If you're able to inject a patient correctly, you use less product because you know where you're injecting and get better outcomes. Your patient's more likely to tell their friends, my injector can't be beat, look at the results and more likely to build on that business um, and that reputation as the best cosmetic nurse because of the skills they learn through our annual conference. In addition to um, learning new techniques, our annual conference is an opportunity for our nurses to go over adverse events. This is the emergency protocol that our nurses have to go through every year. It's currently not mandatory, but at Juve, we don't wait for the government to put things in place to implement them. We sometimes create self-governance to ensure that we are ahead of the game. So all our nurses undergo every 12 months adverse events. That's if something goes wrong, what do you do? How do you treat it? Um, and, yeah. and obviously we have a bit of fun. If, you, if you're on our um, Juve Instagram, you will see um, our conference. We have a lot of fun. Um, Next slide. So um, we are, like I said, we are the leading business partner in medical aesthetics. Um, we see our relationship with our nurses as a partnership. We're not their boss. We're actually partners with them. We're continuously educating our nurses, upskilling them, investing in the business development and bringing on new technologies to safeguard their businesses and also our own. Um, we host regular webinars. So every Monday since COVID has been locked down, um, Juve has been hosting a webinar and we're always talking about different things. So some of the topics we've done is vascular occlusion, blindness, business, profit and loss, um, insurance. What are some other things off the top of your head? Um, we look at migration, a filler, how to treat it. What do you do when a patient comes in um, and they've got ptosis? That's when they've got the eyebrow um, that's drooped down, how to correct it. Um, sometimes we're correcting other injectors' work and how to deal with that and what are the safeguards you've got to put in place for your business when you're doing all that. We also do the one-on-one -on -one business sessions with our nurses. We do, we've got a comprehensive online resource um, intranet site. So all our, resource, all our resources for cosmetic medicine is all on our intranet, our Juve intranet, which is only um, obviously for our staff. Um, some guidelines and also some checklists to make sure that their clinic is up to the standards it should be. So leading technologies and our products, obviously we use all TGA um, products. Our training at Juve means that you've got a full range of TGA approved products of S4 medication um, and it's tailored to every single patient. So we don't tell you what you should use. Obviously we leave it up to the discretion of the nurse and the patient to come up with the best product that will um, for them. So some of the products is Allergan, Galderma, Tioxane, Stellage. Um, so Juve Cosmetic Nurses, um, obviously we've said they run their own business. They've got unlimited earning potential as part of a supportive community. So we have our own internal Facebook Juve team group 
and we all communicate through that. Might ask questions, then different things that different people want to know. They'll put on there. They all support each other. So someone might be really good in social media, and they'll give their tips on how they've become really good. And so we're yeah. very much a family community, um, helping each other. We're a network trying to get stronger together. If you can see those hexagons on the side, it's almost like Juve becomes um, a network that feeds each other and grows stronger together. And that really is some of our key um, foundations um, move that goes through the whole, from the top to the bottom. Um, we all have that same philosophy. And then, yeah. Um, our service to you, so we have no locking contracts. We're a one-stop shop for consumables as well as the product. So um, nurses love that because they don't have to order one thing from one supplier for gloves and then go get their high lays from another supplier and then their Botox from us. So it's all in one. They do one order, it all comes. Um, our doctor's Skyping fee is only $5 per client. Um, we assist in managing adverse reactions. So if any one of our nurses have ever had a vascular occlusion, which is, a, you know, um, death to the tissue, um, we assist them 100% until that patient is 100% recovered. We monitor S4 medication as per the Poisons Act. Um, reliable telehealth service so we're open six days a week from pretty much nine to seven or nine to nine most days um, we've got our professional development plan individual for every single nurse one-on-one um, -on -one business planning sessions private social media community marketing and social media coaching we give out our nurses free um, all the time we're sharing different tiles for their social media um, access to industry training and workshops, ongoing free clinical training um, and upskilling, admin, HR, financial help. So some of our nurses have started employing therapists and they've started employing other registered nurses to work at their clinics. So we assist them with all their HR needs. So um, employment contracts, um, pay rates, all that sort of stuff, their insurances, um, customer relationship management and rewards and recognition program. So you would, if you are on our Facebook, you would see that some nurses will get awarded different things. I'll have a little plaque. Um, so that's what we're talking about with the recognition program. So how to become a cosmetic in injector. Um, basically you have to be a registered nurse. So um, you have to do your nursing qualification. There, there, is, there is a correction there. There are enrolled nurses can do this. Um, however, there seems to be a push and whether the legislation will follow soon enough it seems to be the talk, but um, to safeguard the public health, because there's been quite a few cases where enrolled nurses haven't followed legislation requirements and they've been deregistered and so forth. Right now, you can be either a registered nurse, an enrolled nurse or a nurse practitioner. There might be a change to that to just include registered nurses and enrolled nurses, uh, nurse, nurse practitioners. Practice. Um, so that's just something for you to bear in mind. Um, so firstly, you need to gain your registration. Um, then you would need to do, we require one year working in a hospital so that you understand basic things. So that if someone faints, for example, you know how to look after them. You don't go, oh my gosh, um, because you haven't had the experience and you only get the experience from working in a hospital. Simple things like knowing medications, common medications that a lot of people are on. You need to know those sort of things before being on your own in a clinic and being the most senior person at that clinic. Um, complete dedicated training. Um, obviously, we do, a, like I said, a two-week training. So that's what you need to complete before you can be a cosmetic injector. There is companies out there that you can go and do a training, one-day course, one-hour course, but obviously it's going to take you a long time to become successful if you're doing it that way and it's very dangerous. So, so when you perform our training, um, Nicole mentioned um, the theory for one week. Um, and that's online learning, then you go into this one week hands-on experience. By the end of it, you should be confident um, in performing anti-wrinkle treatments to the um, upper face and possibly the lower face. You'll be able to treat um, dermal filler, filler to the different facial zones. Um, you, under, you have a comprehensive understanding of facial anatomy. Um, you know how to identify risk um, in injecting. Um, so prior to commencing the training, you need your APA registration and ABN. So that's your business registration. Um, your company name, you need to register for GST. You have a business name, logo, social media accounts all set up. Obviously a bank account with link to your business account. FPOS terminal, professional indemnity and public liability. 
you need to have a police check, um, know where you're going to be actually working from. We also ask for headshots and a bio of yourself. You need an iPad and you need to have done your CPR. Okay, so it just says when you're ready to take the leap, um, you can contact our head office. Um, I think in saying that, I'll stop sharing now. I think in saying that, um, if you are thinking of the Juve story is a great story. Um, and it's easier to see how you'd want to emulate that or, you know, join that, that journey. But I've got to say, it is hard work. Our most successful nurses are dedicated to this and work extremely hard. Nothing has just been given to them on a silver platter. Their bedside manner and their um, communication with patients is better than anyone I've ever seen. They really know how to, and it's authentic. They care about their patients. They care about their outcomes. It's not that they, they, they are driven for the financial benefits. They're driven for the cosmetic outcomes and meeting the patient's needs. Um, so that's really important. And if that is in your core philosophy, then you're probably not aligned with the Juve um, business because that seems to be, we're all about being safe, um, only treat those areas where we know we can actually meet the client's expectations. Um, we're not a one hit wonder. We have been around for 12 years. There's lots of copycats out there. Um, but the one thing that they do miss um, is we're, we're leaders in the way we approach things. Um, I think it can be said that we're, um, you know, front, front runners. We're above, we go above and beyond to ensure patient safety. And that's our first priority is our patient safety and our nurses registration. I worked really hard to get my nurses registration and I would never want to lose it. So I always have that in my front of my mind when we're doing any sort of training. Would I do this? And that's why we made the decision as a company not to do the really high dangerous areas like nose, glabella, forehead with filler. Um, so they're the sort of decisions that we make, even though they're really high money makers, we decided that it's not worth it because the patient's safety is paramount. So it's things like that in the industry. We don't take shortcuts. Um, if you're being injected by a Juve nurse, you're being injected ethically um, with the highest levels of skills. And I think that's what you've just got to come home, um, go away with thinking, well, because a Juve nurse is really being educated formally. Um, she does have great ethics. She's there to make sure the best results come out of it. And at the end of the day, Juve is a network and they all, all our nurses are answerable to the Juve tel, uh, medical officers. So the, the medical practitioners, they answer to them. Um, so if the treatment hasn't gone right, um, although they're running their own business, we still do take complete control and responsibility of every patient. So does anyone have any questions for Melissa and myself? Do you want to hear some statistics? Number one treated area would be, Nicole? For what? For Botox or fillers? Out of all of them. Uh, probably at the moment, depending on the generation, but young girls love lips. We all know that. Um, the older generation is still loving the upper face toxins, cheeks. Um, but I guess um, with, I just want to go one step back to our training. That's what Melissa and I have, over the 12 years, because we've got all this inside knowledge, we're hands-on people. So we're in the office with all our staff. Um, we understand we're on the road. Angela would know, um, Anila would know I've been to both their clinics before, I've been to the training centre. Um, we know firsthand what can go wrong and that's the, the biggest difference, I guess, from Juve is a one-day workshop over a two-week training with every six weeks training. That's one of the things because it all comes, as you ladies would know, the better therapist you are, it's always by practice. It's by treating people. It's by seeing good results and bad results. And I guess that's what, you know, if, when, if you ever do get into this industry or you are looking for a nurse for your clinic, um, Melissa touched on the Juve nurses uh, outstanding for that reason. Um, it's just a... What is, what is the cost of the course? Um, that would be, are you a nurse or a therapist? Because it will change by the time if you become a nurse. I'm sure it'll be completely different. 
So currently, um, Kimberly, um, they're looking at formalizing this through university and a postgrad. Um, so it, that's why Nicole's reluctant to answer that. Currently, the rules are that um, a nurse can train another nurse, but if it gets formalized, it will become just like a university degree, the cost of that. So, so for Juve, we charge 5,500 um, for the workshop. Um, and then you can go do other courses that might be anywhere up to $20,000. There's workshops that you can do for $2,500 for a day. It just depends. But at Juve, we charge $5,500 um, for the two-week training. You're welcome. Any other questions? Are there any parts of the face that you can't treat? We do not treat glabella, forehead, or noses with filler. That's what we don't treat as a whole company. No, I don't treat them anymore. We used to, but we don't anymore. So, Deborah, the glabella is um, the frown area. The filler. The filler. That's the risk of blindness increases it significantly, so we don't do that. The facial artery runs through that, so that's why we won't treat that area. And when you talk about the difference between um, Botox and fillers, can you let the girls know which area does what? Because I don't know what's changed since I last looked into it, which is about eight years ago <laughs> yeah so the different areas so botox normally treats a muscle so wherever there's an active muscle it can be anywhere in the face it can be in the neck um so common ones is your forehead frown and your crow's feet then another common one is lip flip masseters to slim that masseter muscle nephrotidy neck lift um chin drop chin dimpling you can do the trampeze muscle for those people that have got really tight trampeze. Um, underarm sweating. So that's all Botox. They're the commonly used Botox areas. With fillers, common is cheeks, chin, lips, marionettes, nasolabial fold, preauricular, jawline. So they're the most common areas, necklines with filler. There was one question. Would you recommend your nurses to work full-time or can they still work as a nurse somewhere else? No, so it just depends on where the nurse is at. So if it's a new nurse coming into the industry, if they were to leave their job and work full-time as a cosmetic nurse, they would have no bookings and they would be, um, they would just end up giving up because they can't get that many bookings to, to commit to a full-time position. So we normally recommend you start one day a week and slowly build it up. And then you start two days a week. And then when you're getting busy on those days, then three days, then to four days. Most cosmetic nurses really don't work five days. They normally keep to around four days and they get really fully booked on those four days. Some of them work five days and then some of them start employing nurses to actually take on that overflow once they get to that level. So we do have a, um, we touched on the business side. We do have a business benchmarking. We actually make different recommendation on their journey as cosmetic nurse. Um, so although it might start off working um, Usually, I, we don't, I, do, I prefer my nurses not working um, under a wage. Um, I ask them to take on licensing agreements or rent out rooms. But some nurses will work under a wage and then work for themselves other days. But we do have a whole business model that we run through to guarantee their success. Um, so they become number one. Do we train in um, lifts as well? Three so, lifts. Yeah, so that's the next thing that was probably missing on the slide. Now, cosmetic nurses, as they grow, and once they've developed the S4 medication for Botox and dermal fillers, then part of their six-week training is we start, um, as they progress, we start training them on thread lifts. We train them on PRP. Um, we train them on... Um, Juva Slim, which is the fat dissolving for the under the chin, lower abdomen and flanks region. Um, we train them on Cosmoline. We train, there's lots of other therapies we train them on. We train them on um, like fraxel laser treatments. Like there's a whole diverse, it depends on where they are in their um, journey. cosmetic journey, um, what we invest in them and how they go. Um, there's another question, is getting a lip flip worth it or effective? It is worth it and effective, but it's not an, um, like a massive result. So it's really for those people that the sphincter muscle around the lip is retracting in. Um, causing them to have no show of their lips. So it helps re release that muscle and roll it out slightly. Um, but they also need filler as well. So your nurse would decide with you on the day whether it is related to that or not. Um, but for those that do have a bit of a rolled in lip from the muscle, it works quite well. Obviously, you can only put a small amount in. Otherwise, you, get, you won't be able to drink through a straw. 
Um, so it just depends on how your body reacts. But most people, they're very happy with it. I have a client that comes every six weeks just for that. So she loves it. And then every six months, she gets her lips filled. Can they be mobile due to um, infection control? Do they need to be permanently in a salon? Um, so again, we do a we do a scorecard on the salon. Not every salon that wants to have cosmetic injectables can have cosmetic injectables. So we do a scorecard. They can move from clinic to clinic. Um, we've got nurses that go into state for three days and are completely booked out for those three days once a month. Um, but it depends on the the clinic we do a scorecard on the clinic to see if it's a right match and if you're asking about mobile meaning houses like mobile meaning going to different people's houses we don't recommend that so i'm not sure if it was a clinic mobile clinic or mobile some people say mobile as in going to people's homes but we don't we don't we don't that. yeah we don't do homes any other questions Anila or Angelina, do you have anything else you wanted to cover off? Cover off? Well, I've got to say, probably our number one referral system comes from beauty therapists. Um, so you hold a lot of weight for a cosmetic nurse if you are in an active clinic. Um, you know, social media has changed that dynamic a little bit. Because, uh, but it hasn't changed it for the recommendation. So if you're speaking to a patient and you recommend them um, the cosmetic nurse, they will take that recommendation very seriously. And then what happens is the patient will then go on to social media and then credential that nurse. Is what my therapist saying true? Let me check out her Instagram. And then she'll flip through that Instagram and go, oh yeah, she is amazing. Oh, look at the results she's getting. Okay, yeah, book me in. So wherever you get, like wherever your staff get placed, they do hold a bit of kind of leverage there that they can recommend. Now we do not, we believe that you should recommend someone that you truly can testify that they're great injectors. Otherwise it's not worth the hassle for you because it will come back on you if the patient isn't satisfied. Um, there's a question, is there a registry where we can find a nurse? So GFA, um, what we do is we get those referrals from lots of different clinics and then we pass them on to a nurse that we know has the availability and maybe in that local sort of area. And then we tee you up with that nurse, but we really don't have much to do. We don't negotiate any of that sort of um, pricing. Most nurses, um, they'll, they'll want to make sure that that big clinic is a busy clinic because they're not going to want... Before, we used to sit in clinics... I would go to a clinic, and Angela would know this, and so would Anila. I would go to a clinic for one client for the whole day. A nurse will not do that anymore. She knows just by putting a few things on her own Instagram, she can be anywhere and get referrals. So a clinic really needs to be proactive if they're going to have a nurse come to them because they'll probably be paying more to go to a clinic than they would their own practice. So um, that's the one thing, I guess, you've got to make sure that you're ready for a cosmetic nurse, that you've got to have the bookings. Otherwise, she'll go once, but she'll be like, oh, I don't want Nicole or Mel, that clinic you gave me, it's really got no bookings and they're not really proactive in getting me clients. So I'm not going to go there anymore. Yeah, and the fees have changed as well. Um, there's the, 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 the clinic doesn't get as much fees as they used to. Most, uh, most nurses now negotiate a flat rate um, for their room rental, which comes with referrals. So that could be like $100 each day she's there, and that's what the clinic gets um, for room rental. But they're able to have a holistic approach to and include cosmetic injectable services. Now, in New South Wales, the legislation has just changed um, to have um, a doctor needs... Now, a doctor needs to Skype all patients Every 12 months is what the legislation used to be. It's now changed to six months. And there's requirements about the storage of the S4 medication, the record keeping of the S4 medication. So if anyone does take on um, one of these, take on a cosmetic nurse, just look, have a look and ensure that she's aware of her legal obligation. And clinic. you're also aware of your legal obligation because as a clinic owner that a nurse is servicing, they must make sure that they've got the storage facilities available. 
there's no longer can a nurse put the Botox in the common fridge that the clinic shares. They have to have their own designated fridge that is locked and that no one can have the key except for the registered nurse. So that's one of the biggest things for the clinic. And it's the clinic's responsibility to ensure that happens, not the nurse. Um, another few questions. So someone asked, what's the factor solving treatment? That's Juvaslim. Um, it's exclusive only to Juve nurses. So if you want that treatment, it's for submental fat, lower abdomen and flanks. Um, you can reach out to a Juve nurse. Would you check out certain clinics first before implementing nurses to ensure they are suitable? Yes, definitely. So we really don't have much to do with that. We just refer them on and the nurse will go out and meet with that clinic owner. And while she's doing that meeting, she'll be checking that the room is suffice, that it's big enough, that they've got a fridge, that we've got a checklist of all the things they must adhere to before that they can attend that clinic. So having a sink in the room, there's a few basic things that they need to have. So yeah, definitely, Anila. Um, Next question, because I'm a student, because it's obviously a growing industry, what makes an individual stand out? So an individual stands out basically from results. So their personality comes first. The first thing a client does when they meet you is they check you out from head to toe um, and they're seeing whether they trust you. Then they have a look at your consultation process. Um, and if you're professional, then they're buying into you. They know that you're educated. So it's all about your education to the client. And then your outcomes. So if you give them a really good result, they're going to refer you and that's how you build up a business. And that's how you get good social media tiles, your before and afters to show how good you are. So it's really a it's lot not of... a quick question. Like you might buy into a nurse at the very beginning and then the results don't come in. So therefore, it's not a good mix. And that the best thing to do is if you are looking at taking on a Juve uh, nurse is reach out to Juve we marry the clinic's requirements to the nurse uh, that we have available. So we'll be able to match you to the right nurse that will meet your, like, the temperament of the clinic, um, how busy and the demand of the service. So if you've been running cosmetic injectables for five years and your nurse walks out on you and you need another nurse, well, you need a senior nurse to join. You don't need a, a junior nurse to join you. If this is the first time you're doing injectables, you might want to have a junior nurse go through and grow with her to be able to get her a better rate, you know, and so forth. So it's best to involve us in it. Um, again, Nicole did say the agreement doesn't happen with Juve anymore. It happens directly with the nurse. Um, Juve is not involved, but we'll be able to match you together. Uh, next question, can a client keep using their own skincare or do they need to stop forehead? Are there any contraindications to the treatments? No. So they can use their own skin treatments beforehand. There's no problems, but there's no um, abrasive treatments beforehand, obviously, where there's um, any signs of infection or <laughs> breakage of skin. Um, Who's the I, best injector? Me! <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm going to tell you, I think all my nurses are the best injectors. I really... I don't, I don't worry about who I sit on the bed with. That's true. We I, don't get injected by anyone that I walks in. I won't get injected by anyone that walks in. There are some nurses that do lips better. They, 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 they seem, but it's also not because they do lips better. They might not do lips better than 10 other nurses, but what they have, they've built up this market that thinks that they are the best at lips and they just get lip clients and, and then they'll ring me up going, all I get is lips. Can't I get an older woman that wants a total face? And I'm like, well, you've created this younger market platform. Enjoy it. You've got a little niche. Go with it. Um, and they do get great results. So it depends. That's a hard question to answer. Any other questions? You both injected me laughing out loud. You were both amazing. No oh, would not have injected you. I never <laughs> injected you. I'm not a nurse. Um, how do you stop the homogenizing of faces? So that is, that's all to do with what people's expectations are. And that's something that some injectors will do what the patient wants. Um, and that's why I don't really have a young clientele because I won't do what patients want. Oh, like it's got, it's very up to the individual, but um, it's a hard one. So it's really up to the nurse to say no and stop to the patient. But we do educate our nurses on that. We recently, recently just purchased these books for all our nurses, and I'll send, I'll send you one, and you can have it in your library um, for you guys to read. And it's called Unique Faces, 
And it's this new philosophy on saying no to patients. And it really is what Juve stands for. We want to be able to say no. We don't want everyone looking the same. Um, Nicole and I sit here before you. I'm um, 48. Nicole is younger 42. than me. Um, and I think I still look age appropriate. I feel like I still um, do not look like everyone else. I look unique and so forth. And that day, and you look at our nurses, that'll be a good indication. And we put a bed. So um, a nurse rang me the other day as an example. And she said, look, I just treated a patient a month ago. And she wants another meal of lips in, uh, another meal of filler in her lips. And I said, well, what's the company policy on that? And she goes, can't do it. And I said, that's your answer. So you just have to go back to the patient, explain why we don't do it. And then if she understands the rationale as to why, then she won't go somewhere else and get it done. She'll wait for that period of time because you've explained it well enough. It's all about the safety of the patient. So we do have restrictions on certain um, areas to ensure that this doesn't happen. But yeah, then they do go other places and then they come back. I have clients and go somewhere else and they'll come back. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Can you high it out and start again? I said, I told you. And then they'll never leave you. Once they do that once, then they never leave. But yeah, that's one of the things, unfortunately, with the younger generation, they all want to look similar. Um, and I think that's the Kylie Jenner sort of look. What are your thoughts on the Russian lip technique? The Russian lip technique's been out for many, 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 many years. It's, but they've just really um, done good marketing on it. Um, I think the Russian lip technique is great for the right candidate. So it's not for every single lip. Um, it's really dependent on the patient's face. So you can make someone look really odd doing the Russian lip if they don't have the right lip shape for it or they've had multiple treatments in the past. It's really for a person that hasn't had filler before um, and is wanting that, you know, central filler look, full um, look. Would you always recommend Hylase? Hylase is used when there's um, either necrosis, which is an adverse event, there's filler migration, patient dissatisfaction with the lip, um, you can use highlights to blend it. Um, a skilled nurse can use highlights to blend the filler. Um, but it's not something you would use. Um, it's only something you would use if you had to. So you could, there's other things you can do prior to highlights, even that you would do first um, before you just go straight into highlights a patient. Now, I think we read her question wrong. You train the nurses injecting me. Who oh. are those nurses? Oh, back in the day. Back in the day, oh, yeah. yeah. All the nurses back in the day. We used to train every single nurse ourselves, so we never, ever employed a nurse that was already trained prior because they came with a few little um, negative or... Bad habits. Bad habits. Bad habits. Um, now we don't do that, so we retrain them, we assess them, and then we deem them competent or not. Um, but, yeah, back in the Ella Rouge days, all the nurses we trained ourselves. I've got a question. So um, with training, obviously everyone um, learns at their own pace. So if you had like a nurse come through um, that took a bit longer, would that just be something that you just keep at it? So um, every six weeks, remember, they've got that yeah. training. But if yeah. we didn't deem them competent in the areas yeah. where they have to be deemed competent through their training, the foundations training, then we make them come back for another day or two days. We assess it depending on how so Angela, the training up until recently is one on one. Yeah. So it's not it's one on one. So it's just the trainer and just the student um, learning for those um, for that week. We've recently gone into two to one, um, and we still haven't had we've had one one group of two come in. Um, even then, if they're learning at different levels. Um, there's always an additional trainer that can pull the second person aside and get them more familiar. Or as Nicole said, we extend the training out. They don't get to inject. We don't sign them off. They don't get to be injecting out in the public unless they're deemed competent. So we've had it twice happen, um, twi two times. One lady we've never deemed her competent. We just said, unfortunately, you're, this is not for you. Um, we cannot sign you off as competent. Um, and then another nurse, she was so nervous during her training that I said to her, look, I'm going to have to extend your training for another two days. And she was fine with that. She did it. Um, and now she's one of our top injectors. She's phenomenal. It was just during her training. She got so overwhelmed um, and she was on some silly diet as well, I think, at the time. Um, but she was so overwhelmed with nerves that she, we just couldn't deem her competent. Um, but right currently today, she's one of our top nurses. So I'm so glad that she st stuck, went through it. 
and got to the other side because she's yeah. phenomenal. And you would know, being educators, if they just don't have it, they don't have it. Um, and Nicole says there's been two, two of late, but we did, we've stopped. There was a doctor that we had very early on um, that we actually turned back as well um, and didn't allow him to inject. Um, there's been a few cases or they finished our training and then they've come back in for their six weeks and, you know, they just haven't retained the information. Um, well, they haven't actually gone and started injecting. So they've lost everything that they've learned and then they become very nervous. So then we have to start, we, we, we tell them we've got to re-educate you. Let's start from the beginning again. Um, so we're all about, and that's to ensure patient safety. Um, one of the questions, do you get a lot of malinjectors? Malinjectors, no. we don't get a lot of them. We've had maybe 10 over the years. Yeah, less than 5%. Yeah. Um, they either do really well or not so well. So if they're on, most women do really well, but males either get it or they don't. And so they won't stay in the industry for long because they can't, they're either not good in sales because some, they wouldn't spend the money on it. Or some flamboyant personalities that tend to be the male clientele that come, male nurses will cause offence so then they don't get traction or they do the complete opposite. They're seen as this flamboyant guru. It comes down to the technique, do you know what I mean? And their personality. Um, oh, yeah, and their personality. So yeah, true that. Any other questions? No? Well, well, ladies, it was great that you all attended. We thank wish you, you all so well much for your time. If it was um, face to face, some of you would be getting some free Botox, but till another day, I suppose. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see you, Nicole. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Bye, thank you. beautiful ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you.